This logo is, is really quite a cute logo and obviously depicts a place of playing for children. Uh, I was trying to think through what could I do that just really says children and, you know, a jigsaw. I love the little feet that have walked across the one of the jigsaw pieces, etc. And we've gone with an interesting typeface. Um, now, I've created a version down here that's uh, I've broken apart so that if you don't have this typeface, you can still use it from down there. But the typeface I've chosen is Showcard Gothic, and I think it's a really cute uh, typeface comes with Corel Draw X5. All right, well, let's delete that and let's see how we actually make it. The first thing, of course, is to start out by making a jigsaw piece. So, what we need to do is simply create an ellipse, a, a, look, an oval shape of some form. It doesn't really matter. You can redo this as many times as you want to get the type of look you want. I'll just give you some simple principles to create a jigsaw piece. So an oval shape or an egg laying on its side. And if we simply create a rectangle and make that rectangle, this is just to give you a size, just make the rectangle fit the egg shape, okay? Once you've done that, then rotate around and then we'll pull it down. If you line, line it up so that the middle approximately is running through the middle. That's about right. It'll do. Now, what we want to use now, if we go to our effects tools, is we've got the envelope tool. Haven't used this to date. Select the envelope tool. It's very important on the property bar to select single arc mode. So select single arc mode. Finger on control. No, sorry, shift, I should say. Finger on shift key and then pull inward, and what shift does, if I take my finger off shift, you can see it just does one side, finger on shift, and it does both sides at the same time, so it's, you're guaranteed for it to be perfectly even. Just want a slight curve, nothing more, that's about it, and we'll select both of those together and weld them together, and that's the, the little interlocking piece that we'll use for our jigsaw. Now we need to create a square, finger on control, create a perfect square, I haven't rounded the corners of mine. You could round the corners a little. Why don't we do that? I'll round the corners just a little, so this will look ever so different, or slightly different, I should say, to the original. So slightly round the corners. Again, back to the envelope tool. So finger on control this time. So what control will do is, see, finger on shift does the opposite, as you can see, right? But again, make sure you're in single arc mode. Finger on control pushes in the same direction. Rather than doing an opposite, it goes in the same direction. So we want a little bit to the right, and finger on control at the top, and a little bit down. Okay, we've given that sort of unusual bent shape to the jigsaw. Okay, slightly rounded corners on this one, so it doesn't have those sharp points. Even looking at that, I think I prefer the sharp points, but you get the idea. So we'll pop that there, select them both, and C to align to the center plus, and just pull straight down, opposite, have, the, have it just hang over the edge approximately the same distance as the top, so it's about right. Now, plus on my keyboard, rotate round, finger on control, pop that there like that, select them both, and E this time to align centre, plus on my keyboard, straight over to the other side, and just hang it off the edge around about the same. I do a lot of things by eye. You'd be very surprised. Um, I know everyone wants measurements and they want this and they want that, but I really do a lot of things by eye. And I'm sure I could figure out a way for you to do that perfectly, maybe have a, a square that's going all the way around the outside that lines up with all the edges or something. But really, learning to design by eye is very important. Select the top one and the one on the side and the jigsaw itself and weld those two together. Now we're going to use these two to trim with, so select, finger on shift, and trim, select, finger on shift, and trim, delete those pieces, and we've got a jigsaw. Now really that was quite simple to do, wasn't it? So that's your basic jigsaw shape, and of course we'll just copy that for the rest of the shape. So I'd like for you now to go ahead, create your jigsaw shape, we'll come back and put the rest of it together. So how is your jigsaw looking? It's fun making jigsaws, I quite like it. I'm just going to shrink that down a little, pop that over there, plus on my keyboard, move that one along, and interlock it, and plus on the keyboard, move it down and interlock. Now I'm doing this partly so that you can not see it does actually all lock together. Isn't that cool? So we'll select the first one, make it red, 
and the next one make it yellow the next one is bl uh, sort of navy blue and the last one is green some simple basic colors remove the outline so right click on the no color well now we just want to start moving things around a little to get the effect so I'm going to select the red one select again and rotate a little move it down Still want I want to still get the impression or show the impression impression that that can still lock into place there. Okay, so I'm still just going to show a bit of white through there. Now with the green one, same thing. Select and rotate to the right a little bit. Same. I want to show that you know there's that the, 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 there is a place for it locking together. And for the blue one, let's pull this down a bit and we'll rotate in the opposite direction. If you were telling a story, you'd say you're about to create a bit of friction by going the opposite way. Now notice the layering. So the red one's at the bottom, followed by the yellow, followed by the blue, followed by the green. Now a shadow is going to completely do all the rest of the work for us. Simply select the whole thing, come over to your interactive effects tools, and we're going to select the drop shadow tool. Click and drag in the middle, and just pull off to the left a little. Now here's the beautiful thing about this. As long as we've got our stacking order correct, the order of the objects, you'll see how the yellow throws a shadow over the red. The green throws a shadow over the yellow and over the blue. So, and the blue over the red. Let's sharpen it up. So go with 5 and we'll go with 45. There we go. How cool is that? Now, we just simply select everything. Control G, group it together. That was quite simple to do. And if you like, you can go off and do this portion if you want and then come back, but I'll continue on here. Now I want the text, so I'll just type it out. So A, kids place. That's not how I spelt it, is it with a Z? Okay, pop that here. Let's select our typeface. Hopefully you've got it, show card gothic. If not, and you don't want to use this one, um, Try an alternate one. There's lots of there's lots that would work. You just want one of those cartoony child type looking ones. All right. <clears throat> now you'll notice how everything is uppercase because that's the way this typeface works. So I want to give the illusion of having you know capitals and so forth. So what I'm going to do is first of all stretch the kerning or the the spacing between characters out. So select your shape tool, and we'll stretch that right out a bit. Um, and then I'm going to shrink that back down. A little bit more. May have spaced it a little bit too far apart. Back just a little. Now, while I've got my uh, shape tool selected, I'm going to select my letter A, finger on shift, the K, and finger on P. So with those little nodes selected, I now have only those three characters selected, and I can adjust the point size. Let's have a look at what, say, 35 would look like. See, I'm now getting the illusion of my capitals. Um, a little bit bigger. Let's go with 48 will be too big, I think. So maybe if we type in 40, hit enter, and that looks pretty good. Now the last thing I want to do is I want to shift the letters around a little bit. You'll actually notice the heights and positioning of the letters is all different. Now again, with the shape tool, you don't have to do a lot. If I just pull the letter D down a bit, just move I over a bit, select the A, pull it down a bit, and I'll pull the E down a little bit. See how you kind of get this movement throughout the text? And it looks like, it looks a little bit more um, kitty like doesn't it? You know, a bit more of a play place. I think I've pulled that D down a little too far. There we go. Now we need a drop shadow. Select your drop shadow tool. Now this time, we're going to copy the shadow. So my object is selected. See the little option up here? Copy shadow properties. Click on that. Click on your previous shadow. Now it won't be right, but you'll have the same sharpness and you'll have the same... Uh, opacity. So all I need to do now is just position. So just pull that back a bit. There we go. And that looks really cool. So the last thing to do is to pop these cute little feet on here and a hand. Now in Corel Draw X5, if we go and we select the artistic media tool, you won't be able to do this in earlier versions because we don't have these particular objects. But in X5, if you select the artistic media tool, one of the options on the property bar is that you need to select up here, I'll just deselect, you need to select the sprayer, and that will give you a number of object or, or, or uh, groups of objects to work with. And one of those is footprint, which is really cool. If you drop the little drop down 
down, you can see the footprint right there. Now I've gone with, um, as you can see there, the, the size of the object is 100. The uh, number of images, etc., is actually not important to me. I'm only interested in the size and I'm manually going to resize that anyway. So all I'm going to do is give one little drag to create one image. That's all I want to do. The other thing I want is a hand. Now, I'm not sure if that's meant to be a hand or a foot. It says <laughs> footprints, but it kind of looks like a hand to me, so I'm going to use that as well, like a child's hand, you know. So, oops, control Z. I need to deselect that. Now select my hand, and just a little draw, and I've got a hand. Now, if you right-click on that object, you can go Break Artistic Group Apart, and that will remove that little line there. If I was going to uh, draw a line shape, then these hands would have been placed along that line. And the same here, right click, break group apart, move that little line out the way. So now, I'll place that there, rotate it around a little, bring it down in size, a little bit more, zoom in, have a look. Now, plus on my key, in fact, before I even do that, Control Z, I'll just make that orange in colour plus on my keyboard, pop one up there, and now I need the reverse of that, so plus, and I'll just f finger on control, flip that over the other way, actually I didn't do that right, did I at all, let's just do a mirror, bring that there, rotate it round, pop that there, back there, plus, pop that there, just try to figure out how a child walks, select the feet, and I'm just going to make them transparent. A little bit of the yellow will come through. So again, back to our interactive effects tools, down to transparency. We're going to, on the property bar, select uniform. And you can see how the yellow comes through the orange. It gives a little bit more of a blend. And from my point of view, I was imagining, you know, a child had walked through some paint or something. So, okay, F4, zoom back out. Now with the hand here, we're going to make that yellow in color. Shrink it right down and just simply place it on top of the A. And there we go, we're finished. Isn't that a really cool, fun little logo? Hope you've enjoyed this one, and I'll see you in our next one.